Hello, my name is Linda Brown and welcome to Meet the Candidates. It's my pleasure to bring this one-to-one -one question and answer forum to you. You know, in speaking with people around town, it's come to my attention that sometimes folks don't really know who might be running for a particular office or even a time who's representing them presently. So this is one way for residents to get to know who's running for what office and to get to know a little bit more about the candidate and the issues that are important to them. I'll be asking local candidates questions that are pertinent to the office that they're seeking. They'll be about different issues facing the city and getting their responses and what they would do to either change or build on these issues. Now notices inviting candidates to join in on this forum were sent out to all who are running. The ones that you'll be seeing in the interviews are candidates that responded. However, before I start, I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to HC Media for opening this studio to me along with the help of their wonderful staff and equipment. So much goes into being able to do something like this and I appreciate it so much. They are one of Havel's gems. So, we're going to get started with our first candidate. I am here with council person, Melinda Barrett. How are you? Good. How are you, Linda? I I'm am doing Glad to be here tonight with you. Thank you so much for doing this. I really think, thank you for taking part in this. I really do. Oh, I was excited to. You are. You're always there. You're always there. So listen, let's start off with something really easy. Let's, you've been a part of City Council for a long time now. How long have you uh, been on council? This is my sixth year. So th I run in three elections thir so far. Three terms. So this would be my fourth. So I know I know you fairly well, but please share with some other people if, a little bit about you that they might not know about. Um, well, I, I work a lot. I like to work. I'm Me kind too. of a workaholic. Me too. Um, I, I've had a different a change kind of in what I do right mm -hmm. now. Right. Um, taking care of my mother. Absolutely. I Absolutely. closed a store that I ran for 23 years. Uh, I, 23 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I worked downtown for. Uh, about uh, from the time I was 19, I was still in college, but I, I and I have worked and lived in Haverhill that entire time, which is time. pretty much how I know a lot of people too. I mean, when you're just there all the time. Your name is down. Your last yeah. name, but people know yeah, Barrett. So, yeah, right? they you do. know, generationally, yes. you know, we're losing that a little bit just because. Well, people move you know, on, my, right? Yeah, people, people move away, move away too. Away exactly. And, and pass away. And, Exactly. So tell us, why have you decided to seek re-election? Well, I enjoy the work. I, I like reading contracts and reading, uh, learning new things, learning, you know, I know more about telephone poles <laughs> than I can't even imagine anybody <laughs> wanting to know, but I, I find it kind of interesting. You uh, do. You, yeah. I know that you, I see it on the, the uh, you know, the, the city councils, like, she's doing this. Another one of those polls are coming up and yeah. going down. Uh, uh, but you, you know, have to, right? CSO, you know, there's a lot of material you, you have to have a little more than a passing knowledge about uh, as as you get involved. As you go along, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I might have had a leg up on some people when I first got on in that I had stayed in Haverhill. Absolutely. I worked in Haverhill, so I heard a lot of different things that other people that might have to commute out of town didn't hear all the time. So that was an advantage. I. I think you know. Well, it is I, uh, I as think far it as is. learning, learning things and ha having at least a little clue of, of of what the subject matter was, and then delving deep, you know, into delving it. then getting into it yeah. a little bit more deeper. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about if you're reelected. Re what are some of the issues that you feel that you'd like to see this city council tackle? Well, you know, the, they're the same things basically that when I ran originally. It, it's it's schools, it's public safety, it's economic development, right. they don't and really and a lot that. of those things are interconnected. You know, uh, problem problems with kids in mm -hmm. gangs stems maybe from a lack of direction at school. It's true. It's uh, very true. You know, opioid use. It, it, 
the same same thing. If if someone is is gets lost along the way, you know, they don't might not have the same family structure that some of us were lucky to have, right. and they get lost along the way, and and it's a it's a hard road back. It's, it, it's very hard, especially for like you said, if they don't have right. that good it's, foundation. It's, it's hard right. even if you if you have that foundation. Well, let's and, actually and talk a little bit about that yeah. because as a city council person, I, how would you work with the mayor and the police department? Well, you yeah. know, to help you know combat opioid issues, the, the problems, and not just opioids. I mean, there's the this drugs is, across this, the line. You the, know, um, how would you work with the mayor? And, well, I think we've worked pretty intently with the mayor mm -hmm. as far as you know, trying to to beef up our staffing which is really a hard order to fill even though we we got him uh, three years ago to add to the staffing levels right. you know it, it was a kind of a big battle at, at budget time yes. um, and we we did have him increase not not as much as we had hoped but at least we got an increase that kind of met was, in the middle yeah. yeah right exactly yeah. um but even with that because police that job is so difficult and it's become less appealing at one time it was a it was a cool job to have i, I know my nephew was a police officer right. um and but it's kind of scary well you have a target on your back um it's, the, it's a scary job. Yeah, it, it and is. it's not it's not respected like it once was. So no. it's hard to we have that. That's a prevailing issue, you know, in all police departments, I think, right now. But then we have a little price differential that hurts us in recruiting. Um, you know, you you could laterally transfer to a different community very close to ours and, and get a $10,000 raise. Yeah, and that's substantial. Yeah. That is that's a substantial when you have kids raise. And well, family and mortgages. And just the, just the, just the cost of living, yeah. right? Your, your regular stuff, food and, yeah. you know, that that's a lot. So that brings me to the next one. If new resources were magically available, do you think, what is one area of city services would you feel needed it the most? Well, right now I think our, our maintenance in our schools okay. is, yeah. it, it has to take a priority. Um, we have children and educators trying to teach and, and if education is a key to s economic development and less it crime, is. then we have to have the best schools we possibly can. And we have to do that not only for kids that are struggling, but to maintain to have the middle class stay in our schools. That's right. It's, it's important. Because That's if fine. people can, you know, some people can't make that choice, but if you don't have the best product available, people will have to make that decision. And we have Absolutely. some of the best teachers. I know. But we, we need the, we the really physical do. plant as well as the materials to go teach hand in hand. Yeah. They really do. So let's talk about that three-letter word tax, <laughs> since that is something that no one really sometimes likes to talk about. But um, we know Havel is no different than other cities or towns yeah. that they tax um, uh, businesses and industrial uh, and uh, commercial businesses at a higher rate than yes. residential. Do you think Havel would benefit from having a single rate? You know, uh, at one time I, I I thought that definitely, and I I would be open to looking that, at that again. Okay. Uh, unfortunately. I think we'd have to do it gradually. Yes, that's a huge change. It's a, to it, would be, it would be a crazy once. change. Right. I, I think we almost couldn't, you know, thinking about it you know, just off the cuff because I forgot you even had that question on, <laughs> on okay. the thing. Just, no, but I, I think it. we probably couldn't do it. But I would like to see some economic development. Eat, no, I sit in on the master plan. Yeah, absolutely. Can, can, I'm not on it, but I. I've but gone. you you attend all yeah, the time. Yeah, I attend absolutely. Um, I'd like us to first tweak zoning um, in the industrial areas, you, you know, maybe a, as it was suggested, maybe change the zoning so they can go up a little higher right. so we can get more and different businesses in those parks to increase our, our base. If we increase our base, it, it's, it, level it levels it out a little. I think that's important because we do have so many, obviously, more residential properties in, yeah. in the city that, that it, you know, that you can kind of skew it down. But, you yeah. know, sometimes I know people feel it's unfair either way, whether you're talking to somebody in the yeah. commercial end of it or, or the residential yeah, it, end it of it. Yeah, it takes a hit. And <clears throat> the other thing is 
by even if you don't go to even, sure. if you just lower it a couple percentages, just as a as a sweetener. Absolutely. Because otherwise, we risk becoming a bedroom community, and then it's all on the and residents. then it's all on the residents, which is never a good thing to have it all the base. Yeah. You know the, that that burden on one base. Absolutely. Uh, Melinda, you are so busy everywhere <laughs> around town. Is there any place that you like to go around town to kind of just kick it back, relax, like I'm off duty, <laughs> don't call me, don't text me, I don't want to hear anything, you know? Well, I, um, I play golf at Bradford Country Club on Thursday. I don't play as much golf as I used to. Okay. So. Uh, but Thursday nights I play golf. That's a treat. Right? Yeah, it's a, a treat. treat. Yeah, yeah it's, I it's play a in a nine-hole league. Good it, for you. It's fun. I've played, the, these guys I've known since I was in college. and I. I'm Fantastic. the only girl in the league. Girl power, girl right? Power, girl. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, and I—that's that's a fun getaway. And then in the summer, I play in the, uh, which we play tonight. The, it's the last night. The tennis rec. Oh, okay. So you're rec playing league. that? Yeah. Yes. I'm great. I've never really improved, but I play every. <laughs> you're having I, fun. You're yeah, enjoying, it's, it's fun. right? That's all that matters. It's fun. Now, Melinda, how can people get in touch with you? Well, um, I, I have a telephone number, 978. Please share, yes. 374 uh, 4370. Okay. Uh, I have a cell phone number, 978 618 8189. Great. And I have the mbarrett at cityofhaverhill.com. Cityofhaverhill.com. Great. Uh, my, my email address. And I try to answer. Uh, you know, I will admit, uh, you on do. occasion, I, I do miss. You're our, very approachable. They, they, they fall off my radar after I, know. I don't get it. But you are very approachable. Yeah, okay? I try to be. You are. Listen, we are all out of time. Are you kidding? I know, I know. It's I know it goes so fast, doesn't it? Because it's like it's a conversation like here. I know. Five minutes. I know. Well, listen. Thank you so much for coming. Thank in. You, you are wonderful, and Thanks, the best Linda. of luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it.